Did you know that in the official English translation of One Piece, Aokiji is literally referred to as the greatest power in the Navy? Not the Admirals as a whole, just him. And I think we all know a certain lava lad who might take a bit of an issue with that. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. My name is Liam and if I was an Admiral, I think that my code name would be, I don't know, like the Beige Panda. And today we are here to tackle a very serious, not serious at all actually, not serious, none of my videos are serious, a very curious topic involving the the admirals and their admiralic abilities. Now, for some context, this statement was delivered to me by a viewer for another video. Absolutely no character could beat three admirals at the same time, not even Roger at his peak. Uh, oh. So here is that whole video, I suppose, because I've been thinking about it and it's actually surprisingly difficult to reach a solid conclusion. But if anything, it has made me realize how incredibly underrated and underutilized Marine admirals have been in the series thus far. Like Paramount War aside, they really have done almost nothing. Kuzan's role in the series is more like a whose line is it anyway game, because all he ever does is stand, sit or lie down. Keep Kizaru is a glorified janitor, best knowing for cleaning up a nasty rookie mess on Isle Sabadi. Fujitora took on a very passive role in Dressrosa, leaving justice in the hands of pirating Riff Raff. And as for Ryukugu, well, he does literally nothing, not even eat. According to Ryukugu, eating is too much effort, and he will not engage in this activity unless he's being fed by a beautiful lady, which is the most upper class thing I've heard all day. No wonder the five elder stars back Sakazuki to become the next fleet admiral because he's the only one who has shown any sort of initiative, and he's also a very devout holy man. I mean, it is a shame that he chooses to put those holes in others, but what can he do? All admirals bar him are currently questionable. However, what makes them such fascinating figures is that behind all of that nothing, there is certainly a something. Because the glimpses that we have seen of their true capabilities reveal a stunning level of unexplored and unlimited power. A critical mass that may be impossible for any singular character to equal or not. That's what we're here to find out. And to begin this strange exploration, we're going to have a quick round of Admirite or Admirong, a very simple mini game, the rules of which are as follows. Marine Admiral Kizaru is going to make a statement and it is going to be your job to guess whether it is true or false, AKA telling Kizaru if he is Admirite or if he is Admirong. Now, should you guess incorrectly, then your punishment will be to subscribe to the Grand Line Review, also resulting in consistent injections of One Piece culture administered straight into your YouTube feed. Whereas if you are correct, then you will be rewarded with an immediate enlistment in the Marines and be put to work scrubbing their various floors. Laws. Good time. So here's Kizaru's statement. Fujitora is the only admiral to have worn the color purple. Ne which I had to add at the end because it's Kizaru. But what do you guys think? Is Kizaru Admirite or Admirong? Please do make your choice now and we shall reveal the answer in three, two, one, and bam! Not only is Kizaru Admirong, he is also very Admirong because he himself wears a purple tie. So if you guessed incorrectly, then you know the thing to do and please do say hi in the comments below if you are a new member of the Grand Fleet. Welcome, ne. All right, back to the task at hand. It does need to be noted that collectively, the three admirals are referred to as the Saiko Senryoku, or the ultimate military force in English, which has pretty big implications right out of the gate. Because for this scenario, it does imply that there is no singular Marine who could hope to match the combined power of three admirals, no matter who those three admirals happen to be at the time, which is an idea that brings Garp and Sengoku immediately into the mix. These are the only two characters belonging to the Marine faction that would possibly stand a chance. Mr. Sengoku has actually held the rank of Admiral himself, so he certainly passes whatever qualification there is to be one. And Garp, like a, a mildly aggressive dog at the park, has made his dominance over everyone else quite clear, even boldly claiming that he would kill Sakazuki during the Paramount War after the whole Ace incident. The word whole being a pun there. Yeah, that's the second whole pun I've made in this video, isn't it? I, um, I should probably stop. After this, why is Sakazuki considered to be a golfing ace? Well, that would be because he made a hole in one. By the way, here's a sickeningly fun fact. In golf, a hole in one is also referred to as an ace. So, you know, do with that what you will. Anyway, Sengoku, he's a guy who exists and one that I can rule out in terms of being able to defeat all three admirals. At least for now, because we can't place him on anything too much higher than a single admiral in terms of power, he just hasn't shown any tangible evidence of such a thing. And the main reason why he assumes the fleet admiral position is because he is a sheer military mastermind. However, Garp is a bit trickier. When he said that he would kill Sakazuki, I absolutely believe 
believe it. Put him up against any single admiral, and I think that the result in Garp's favor is going to be a complete wipe, like a very efficient trip to the bathroom. Even at his current age, and actually at his current age, going to the bathroom may start to get difficult. He's an old man. So to consider him going up against three admirals, oh, that's a pretty tough proposition. One problem with modern Garp is that despite not being an admiral, he very much follows their patterns of uh, inactivity. Like during the Paramount War, he really didn't do anything aside from punching a bird. Good, good job, Garp, you punched that birdie. Then again, back in his prime, it's implied that Garp alongside Roger defeated the entirety of the Rocks Pirates. So if we were to invoke some sort of wibbly wobbly, timey wimey stuff, then a younger, more prime Garp could probably at least take on all three admirals. At the very least, I think he's the only Marine in the history of the series who stands a chance. But diving into time travel gets very muddled though, because it's nigh on impossible to compare legendary achievements that we haven't seen with modern standards that we have seen. The legendary actions is always going to seem better because it sparks the imagination, whereas reality is very bitter and disappointing. So I'll try not to do that too much. Speaking of modern standards though, another reason why this is such a difficult question is because as of right now, there is only one character in the series who has fought against three admirals simultaneously, and that would be pre time skip Luffy at Marineford. And sadly, we can't tell a whole lot from that. I just think it's, it's kind of fun actually, that he's the only one who has been driven or foolish enough to try it. And whilst we're talking about fools, here is Doflamingo, one of the smartest dumbasses I've ever encountered. He's actually briefly relevant here because he's another character who has displayed a distinct confidence in being able to deal with Admiral class combatants. I mean, he outright attacked Fujitora on Dressrosa. Like this was not a playful exchange. The way Fujitora was talking made Doflamingo think that he needed to be eliminated right here and now. So the flamboyant demon clearly thought quite highly of himself. Although to be honest, the idea of him being able to take on Fujitora alone is uh, kind of ridiculous in retrospect. The way I see this scene now is more like a small dog being backed into a corner and being forced to bark against a uh, bigger dog, purple dog, a tiger, he's a tiger, a purple tiger. Whatever the case, this ain't happening. So let's take a step up from Warlords. No, I'm not covering Mihawk. We know too little about him. And let's get into the more competitive territory of emperors. Of every living character in the series, I don't think it would be controversial to state that the greatest chance of victory in these conditions comes directly from the four emperors. Well, at least some of the four emperors. Unfortunately, I do think that we can rule out Big Mom in this situation. Once again, she's a character that would almost certainly destroy an admiral one-on-one, -on -one, maybe. <laughs> However, Big Mom has proven time after time that she is horrendously inferior in battles involving multiple parties with multiple brains. To put it simply, that's because of how Big Mom takes in information. She simply does not have the mental infrastructure available to use her godlike powers to the best of her abilities. As a result, it would probably be fairly simple for three trained military tacticians to get the better of her. The one question I would have is, would the admirals at all fear her? Because if so, that is monumental, and it does completely change this fight because it opens up soul manipulation. However, if they do not fear her, then we have big problems with this big mother, especially since it has been shown that it is possible possible to inflict a level of damage that knocks her out, which was demonstrated by Queen in the Udon prison. So while it may be tough, eventually three admirals would almost certainly prevail because all they need to do is outsmart a child throwing a tantrum. The more interesting candidate would be Kaido. It is quite famously said about this individual that in a one-on-one -on -one fight, always bet on Kaido. Land, sea, and air. Out of every living thing in this world, this pirate is said to be the strongest creature alive. So obviously he is the pinnacle of living challenges. Even then, oh, I honestly find it very difficult to imagine that he would ultimately succeed in this 1v3 scenario, because here's the unfortunate thing about Kaido. All one really needs to fight against him is advanced armament hockey. Something we know for a fact that all three admirals, or I should say all three pre-time skip admirals had, because they performed during the Paramount War before we knew what it was. And as destructive, powerful, and durable as Kaido is, we should also remember that he is he's kind of a career loser. As a pirate, he has been outright defeated seven times and captured. 18 times, and whilst those occasions were likely when he was not at the peak of his strength, it still shows that Kaido is far from infallible. I mean, seriously, he's been caught more times than Luffy, and Luffy gets imprisoned, like, once an arc. Actually, that's not true. I've just found a list of every time that Luffy has been captured, and as it turns out, he's been caught or imprisoned 19 times over the course of One Piece, so that would be one more than Kaido. Eh, that's some video potential there, you know, like, top 10 Luffy imprisonments. So while Kaido may provide by far the greatest living challenge, challenge, I am not sure if I see him pulling it off, especially because we've not yet experienced exactly what it takes to put an admiral in any sort of critical condition. I mean, not even Whitebeard was able to permanently put down Sakazuki. So we're gonna need some pretty serious stuff here. To complete the emperors, 
is I should touch on Shanks and Blackbeard, which Shanks, look, there's no way to tell. We know far too little about his abilities, just like Mihawk, to make an accurate judgment. And with Blackbeard, well, <laughs> well, that's a definite no. He has two absurdly overpowered devil fruits at his disposal, but of all of the emperors, he is the one who has proven to be the most brittle and fragile. There is a very good reason why Blackbeard needs to be sneaky and strike at a tactically perfect moment, because he can't just stroll in with god mode active like Kaido, Whitebeard, and maybe even Big Mom could conceivably pull off. We have yet to talk about dead characters though, and having brought up Whitebeard, he's a pretty good place to begin. Because while I did admittedly state that he failed to bring Sakazuki down, that skirmish was also pretty completely one-sided. Yes, old, sick, and tired Whitebeard suffered a fair few mortal injuries from Sakazuki, but look, that's just what's going to happen. When it falls on you to fight 100,000 Marines at once, on top of an Admiral when you really should be sitting comfortably in your pirate retirement home, just reminiscing about, you know, the good old days. Because a good old days Whitebeard potentially would have been able to do it. In his prime, Whitebeard represents both the pinnacle of power and tactical intelligence. He was a master of battle, both large scale and individual. And he also has everything imaginable at his disposal, be it Haki, Devil Fruit, Raw Power, and quite frankly, three admirals would probably crumble before peak Whitebeard, or at the very least, it would be the closest fight so far. And I'd extend this to Roger as well, simply because from all of the available evidence, he has been portrayed to be at least on par with the peak Whitebeard. He also fought frequently against both Garp and Sengoku, and if there's anyone who can do it, then the Pirate King is not a bad bet. Another name that might be mentioned is Zebek. I'm going to leave him alone for the same reason as Shanks. Don't know anywhere near enough about him, except that he was a charismatic and ambitious mofo. And what that that leaves us with is the left field candidates because One Piece can never truly be solved by power alone, except maybe in this case. In a one-on-one -on -one fight, weird powers can prevail, but three-on-one is all of the odds become not great. So when I did ask this question in my community tab, many people were quick to point out Sugar, who I often like bringing up in arguments like say, oh, characters who can beat Kaido or similarly strong existences. And without spoiling anything, the manga might have put that possibility to rest. But even if we do accept that Sugar's ability work against anybody at any time, she still needs to pull that off three times against the Admirals, which, oh, it's not happening. She could conceivably turn one Admiral into a toy, but three, uh, mm, mm -mm. Shirahoshi is another one being an ancient weapon and all capable of great devastation via the Sea Kings, but I well, I'm, I don't know if I'm convinced at this point. Poseidon is considered to be an ancient weapon for a reason, I suppose. So under the right circumstances, that probably implies that anyone could fall to its power, because otherwise, why would anybody fear them? It's a big if though, because the Admirals are intensely underestimated characters. And yeah, a lot of that is due to how they've been used at this point, but they are no joke. Even having gone through all of this, I I can't think of anyone who I would bet large quantities of currency coming out on top against all three. If I had to, I'd probably go with Peak Whitebeard, if only because Roger's aloofness might cost him the battle, but there is uh, there's no real good answer to this. Oda has done a pretty fantastic job of constructing the system of characters who, even in the face of maddeningly powerful individuals, are still nigh on insurmountable as a combined force. And when it comes to nigh on insurmountable, there is no better example than the ever controversial fight between Luffy and Katakuri. I have a great video detailing that monumental struggle. Do check it out and I look forward to seeing you there.